Okay, uh, I'll get started. Um, last class, we talked about the damp-driven pendulum. Uh, we started with the second-order nonlinear differential equation describing the damp-driven pendulum. And we worked through the numerical solution of the damp-driven pendulum. And we looked at some of the basic features. Um, there's the periodicity, there's the, the damping under critical over damping, and then there was the driving force. Uh, in today's class um, and the next class, I'm going to introduce two more ways we can visualize uh, and picture the motion of the damp driven pendulum and, and actually other systems. Uh, one of them is called Concari plots. We're actually going to look at that in the next class. And the other one is um, phase space diagrams, and we'll look at that in, in this class. So that's one new topic of uh, today's class and Wednesday's class. Uh, the other one is that we're going to move on from some of the basic features of the damp driven pendulum, that periodicity and damping and driving force to explore, kind of examine uh, the transition to chaos and chaotic behavior. So that's a second goal for this one. So I should stress that the chaotic behavior is a feature of a nonlinear differential equation. So the nonlinearness of the uh, pendulum dif differential equation. It's not. It's not a part of um, linear differential equations. So it isn't exhibited by linear differential equations. I mean, often because we approach the subject analytically, uh, we think of um, uh, physics differential equations has most often been linear differential equations, but actually most differential equations are nonlinear differential equations and the linear differential equations are a special case. So we're stepping beyond that special case um, where there is, is no chaotic behavior to the general case where there is chaotic behavior. Okay. So today's class, we're going to talk a bit about phase, part, phase space. We're going to look at phase space diagrams. Uh, they're called phase space plots. They're called phase space portraits. Uh, they will, another way of visualizing uh, the pendulum or other such systems. So in the last class, when we visualized the pendulum, we made plots of the displacement angle of the pendulum, theta versus time. And we made plots of the um, angular velocity, omega of the pendulum versus time. And by looking at theta versus time and omega versus time, we kind of visualize those features of periodicity and damping and driving forces. There's a, another way of picturing the motion of the pendulum. And as I say, it's this in phase space by making a phase space plot. So phase space is like a complete description of the, in our case, pendulum system. So if you specify the location in space, phase space, you're specifying everything about the pendulum at that, that moment. So for the, for the case of a, a pendulum which moves in one dimension, is free to move in one dimension, uh, the phase space has two dimensions. And uh, we need, normally think of those two dimensions that completely specify the state of the pendulum as the combination of the displacement angle and the uh, angular velocity. So on its own, the angle doesn't completely specify the state of the pendulum. And on its own, the angular velocity doesn't completely specify the state of the 
pendulum. But together, if you specify both the angle and the angular velocity, that completely specifies the state of the pendulum. Um, the evolution of the pendulum, the evolution of the pendulum's motion is then kind of, it's like a, a sequence or set of states, a sequence or set of values of theta and omega, the angle and the angular velocity. And that's called a trajectory in space, phase space. So the, the motion of the, the evolution of the pendulum, uh, how it evolves through its state it is described by a trajectory in, on a phase space plot. So it's a phase space trajectory. And we're going to be looking at those phase space trajectories today. And they uniquely describe the, the motion of the pendulum. I just put this slide here because I'm going to try and simplify a little bit all the parameters that we're talking about for the damp driven pendulum uh, and the differential equation, second order differential equation for the damp driven pendulum. So in the examples in today's class, I'm going to think of the second order differential equation, nonlinear differential equation describing the damp driven pendulum. I'm going to think of it in this form here. So here's the second order differential with respect to angle, first order differential, here's the angle itself. And I'm going to use these parameters. So the natural frequency of the um, pendulum is determined by the square root of this ratio, the acceleration of gravity to the length of the pendulum. So that's, that natural frequency is going to be one of my parameters describing um, the pendulum today. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to set that natural frequency to be one radian per second, or it's equivalent to second, setting the period to be two pi seconds. The other parameters that we're going to use are theta, the dampering parameter, and then the two driving parameters. Um, I'm going to use alpha as one of them that's gonna determine the amplitude of the driving force. And then there's omega F, that's the, um, the frequency of the driving force. And one thing I'm gonna to do today is when I specify the damping parameter, and when I specify the driving frequency, I'm gonna be specifying them in units of the natural frequency. So the pendulum has this natural frequency. And I'm just gonna talk about the damping which has the same units, radians per second, in that frequency. And I'm going to be talking about the uh, driving frequency. Again, that has the same units, obviously, in that, in that frequency, just to keep the, the things simple. And also so that we can reference, kind of compare the sizes of damping to uh, the driving force and, and things like that. Okay, so I think now I'm going to just um, go to my code for the damp driven pendulum, which I, I, I added to it a little bit from last class. I added to, to it to make a phase play, phase space plot. And so we're going to look at some cases of phase space plots. I'm going to start with the simplest sort of undamped, undriven case, make sure we understand that phase space diagram. I'm then going to move to, you know, a little more complicated case where we've got damping but no driving, and we'll look at those phase space plots. Make sure we understand those, and then we're going to move to the case of the damp-driven pendulum where we got damping and we got a driving force. Look at those phase space plots, and we're going to see how we evolve from simple periodic motion to. Um, <coughs> chaotic motion. And there's actually two ways you can evolve your pendulum uh, from the simple periodic motion to the chaotic motion when you add a driving force. One way you can do it, which is maybe the most obvious way, is that you just gradually turn up the driving force parameter, the magnitude, amplitude of the driving force. And if you start with it small, 
or zero, and then you turn it up larger and larger, that evolves from simple pendulum behavior to chaotic pendulum behavior. And we're, we'll actually do that in the next class. Uh, in today's class, I'm gonna evolve from simple periodic behavior to chaotic behavior along a different axis. I'm gonna use the frequency of the driving force. I'm gonna start out with the driving force very close to the natural frequency. So then kind of resonance dominates the situation and we just see uh, with the driving force of periodic motion at the resonant frequency. And then I'm gonna start dragging that driving frequency away from the resonant frequency, away from the natural frequency. And as we dra drag the driving frequency away from the natural frequency, we'll see the onset of chaotic behavior. So it's another axis of which we can approach chaotic behavior. Any questions on all that? Okay. Are you still there? Uh, this is the bit that always scares me the most. Like running my program, and I'm not especially good programmer in front of people. Uh, so anyway, let's go. Um, so this is my program. Um, th this is my program from last class. If you remember, we used the arcade four method to numerically solve the damp driven damp damp driven pendulum. And um, in doing that, we define, well, we had defined the RK4 method for calculating the value of the function at a time interval i plus one, say, from the value of the function at a, at a previous time, i, uh, and the function's derivative. So that's, that's this first guy here. We've seen this a few times now. And then we had a, um, a second user-defined uh, function, I called it pendulum, uh, and it was the one that described the, we broke the second order differential equation down into two first order differential equations, one for angle, um, one for the rate of change of the angle, and one for the rate of change of the angular velocity. And this function defines those two rates of change, rates of change of the angle and rates of change of the angular velocity. So here's the rate of change <clears throat> upstairs here of the angle. And then these two guys here really represent that, these three guys represent the terms in that diff second order differential equation, which we can think of as the rate of change of the angular velocity. So in here you see the, um, uh, the term that arises from the restoring force, the term that arises from the damping force, the term that arises from the driving force. Okay, that's all fine. Okay, so now I've got my parameters that are describing the discrete time that I'm working in. I'm gonna look at 50 seconds of this oscillating pendulum. Remember its period is um, two pi seconds, so a little over six, six seconds. I'm dividing that into 2000 um, time intervals. So that's, that's my discrete time. And then I got the parameters of the pendulum. I, I made L like G 9.8, 9.8 meters and G is 9.8 meters per second squared. That means that my natural frequency, which is square root G over L is just gonna be one radians per second. So that's, that's the one radians per second. And then I've got um, three more constants associated with those features of damping and, and driving the pendulum. Uh, the damping constant, I'm gonna switch that off to begin with. Uh, the, um, then the the amplitude of the driving force and then the frequency of the driving force. I switched off the driving force right now because alpha is zero. Uh, 
And then I've got my initial conditions. I'm just going to displace, release my pendulum from rest, having displaced it by a tenth of a radian, so a handful of degrees. And so now I'm going to do the, the calculation of the function, the solution to the second order differential equation uh, based on the initial conditions, the two initial conditions. So here's where I um, solve for the function using the RK4 numerical method. Um, I'm going to make three plots. So two of them we did last class. So theta versus time. That's uh, from my numerical solution. Angular velocity, omega versus time. So those are the ones from the last class. And then the new phase space plot. And um, let me take this little slicing out to begin with. I'm just going to plot not theta versus time or um, omega versus time. I'm going to plot theta versus omega. So that is that is the phase space that describes the state of the system. And in this portrait or this plot, we can see the evolution of the system. We can see the phase space trajectory. And so I um, wish I could make this go away. These are the three plots then. Um, Upstairs here is angular displacement versus time for my 50 seconds. Remember my amplitude was 0.1 radians, so it's oscillating backwards and forwards periodically. Um, here's my angular velocity in, in radians per second. You notice it's out of phase. So when the angular velocity is zero, you're at maximum displacement um, on the negative or positive sides. Uh, when the it, when the angle is displacement is, is zero, so you're at the equilibrium point, you've got the maximum angular velocity. So the, these two are out of phase. And if you plot ang the angular displacement horizontally here versus the angular velocity, you get this phase space diagram. So this describes the evolution of the states of the system. Uh, you'll notice this diagram, it has both theta and omega in the diagram. So it describes the status of the system, but it doesn't explicitly have the time in this, this diagram. So it is a difference. If we were to watch it as a function of time, you'd see the, um, you, you'd see the state in phase space. We would be starting over here on the far right, as was our initial angle and our initial velocity was zero. So we'd start here and then we would run counterclockwise around this oval, around this ellipse. And that would be our trajectory through phase space. That's the pendulum's trajectory through phase space. Is that phase space diagram fine? It's going to get worse. Okay, so that, that was straightforward, I think. Um, so I want to look at damping now. And we can see what damping looks like um, on a phase space diagram. So I'm going to go back upstairs here and I'm going to switch on damping. And I'm going to go through these three cases of um, under damped critically damped and over damped. So this, this is 0.1 and this is in units of the natural frequency. And so 0.1 is under damped. And so here's the three plots for the under damped pendulum, right? So, uh, upstairs here, you see the plots from the last class, the angular displacement, angular velocity, 
you see that the pendulum's motion, pendulum's energy is dissipating, the pendulum's motion is decreasing. Um, as we turn the uh, kinetic energy of the pendulum, it gets dissipated, say, as uh, into heat energy. So um, those are the familiar plots from the last class. If you plot angular displacement horizontally versus angular velocity vertically, you get this spiral here. And now it's probably a little clearer how this represents the phase space trajectory of the damped pendulum. So we are starting over here on the far right-hand side. Our initial coordinates were that the angular displacement was um, 0.1 radians and the angular velocity was zero radians per second. So we start here and then we swing back through the equilibrium point here, swing over to the left-hand side, negative angle coordinates over here on the left, and then we return. But this time we don't just return along the same path as we did when there was no damping. This time we're returning on a path of smaller amplitude, uh, of smaller maximum angular velocity. And we spiral inwards until finally the pendulum will come, come to rest as we're dissipating energy. And finally the pendulum loses all its energy. And so this is a phase space plot for the case of um, uh, an underdamped pendulum. And if we were to change that parameter um, beta, if we were to say, make it even smaller, make it 0 0.05, two times smaller, then, you know, this would be a, a spiral of many, many more revolutions. If we were to double it, then there would be more dampening, then this would be a spiral with less number of revolutions until we dissipate all the energy. So a special case, we said that if you work for Ford or you, you work for Toyota, then you know this case well, critical damping. So this is when you want to damp out mechanical vibrations as fast as possible. This is when beta in units of the natural frequency is one. And the, the damping constant equals the square of the, the angular velocity. This equals the square of the natural frequency. And so here are the three plots for that case. So again, upstairs, angular displacement and angular velocity versus time. We see that relatively quickly, within 10 seconds of this 50 seconds, the, pend the pendulum, we've displaced it, is kind of just relaxed back to the equilibrium. It didn't oscillate back to the equilibrium, going to and fro. It just smoothly relaxed back to the equilibrium. And you can see this on the face place plot down uh, in the lower panel here, right? We start out at this position on the far right. So this is 0.1 radians displacement in the positive angle direction, uh, released from rest, released with zero, angular velocity zero. And then it picks up some speed and starts moving back towards the equilibrium point. And here it's approaching after 10 seconds, it will have reached that equilibrium point. This is zero, zero. It's at the equilibrium point. It's got no angular velocity. It didn't swing through that point. It didn't oscillate around that point. Critical damping, it just relaxes to that point. Let's do one more. So this is 10 for the damping constant. So that's the case of overdamping. Overdamping like critical damping does not involve oscillations. Only underdamping involves oscillations. Critical damping is the fastest way to get back to the equilibrium, to damp out the, the um, the, the vibration. Overdamping gets you back to the equilibrium point without oscillations, but at a slower rate. 
Okay. So here are the three plots in this case. So again, of course, same order, angular displacement upstairs, angular velocity in the middle, face face down the bottom here. So you see from the angular velocity uh, and the angular displacement, the top two plots that we start with the pendulum displaced from the origin with zero velocity. It then starts to swing back towards the equilibrium. But it's taking a long time to get to the equilibrium. It's not even at the equilibrium, quite at the equilibrium after 50 seconds. And you'll notice that the angular, if you look at the scale, the, the angular velocity is very, really small. Because of the large damping, it's like the pendulum is kind of moving through treacle, or oh, that's a British word, uh, what's the equivalent, like molasses or something like that, to get back to the equilibrium point. So it's moving through some very viscous medium, say, or it's a lot of friction in the pivot point. And so it's taking a long time to crawl back to the equilibrium. So that's what you're seeing here. Interestingly, well, this is an important point about face place plot. On face place plot, we don't see the time. So it's not obvious on the face space plot that it takes a long time to crawl back to the equilibrium other than the fact that the angular velocities are tiny. So it's kind of crawling back linearly after it initially gets going towards the equilibrium, but at a very slow angular velocity, at a very slow speed because of the very large damping force. Okay. So now I'm going to move on to um, adding the, a driving force into this and looking at some of these plots. So I mentioned that in this class, I'm going to start with a driving force very close to the resonant frequency, the natural frequency. And I'm going to take, pull that driving force away from the natural frequency. And, and that's one way of approaching chaotic behavior. And then in the next class, we'll take the maybe the more obvious Route, which is to have no driving force, gradually switch it on to create chaotic behavior. But anyway, I'm going to put in a, a value of alpha 1.5. That I mean, there's no special reason for 1.5, but if I was to put in a, a number around one, that means that the scale of the driving force is the same scale as the restoring force. And so that, that's all I'm doing here. It's having them similar scales. And then for my example, I, I kept on some damping in there. Uh, I kept, but I kept it in this sort of underdamped regime. I put as 0.25. Again, there's no special reason for that value. I just pick some. My omega f is 0.99. So it's 99% of the natural frequency. So it's very close to resonance. And so that's, that's the key point of where I'm going to start working at, where I'm going to work away from to explore um, chaotic behavior. So let, let's run this guy and see what we see. And this is what we see. So we, when you have a driving force and you switch it on, there's this tran, transient period where things are changing because of the influence of the driving force. And then you get into a steady state where you know it's like the system has forgot when the driving force wasn't there. It's just as if the driving force was always on. And you're in that steady state. So the uh, you know the first ten seconds or so in this slide is the, that transient period. The remaining forty seconds is kind of steady state period. You see that after ten seconds, right? Just looks like steady state oscillations in the angle. Looks like steady state oscillations in the angular velocity. Downstairs here, this is again the phase space plot. So I'm plotting um, horizontally the angle, vertically the angular velocity, and we're seeing 
the system evolved from some initial state, it's here. This is actually point, point 0.1 radians for the initial angular velocity. I, 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 sorry, the initial angle, I didn't change it. And, and zero radians per second for the initial angular velocity. So this is the same starting point as the, all the previous examples of the undamped and damped pendulum. And then we're just gonna evolve. This is the phase space trajectory that's following it around here. And then finally it gets on sort of this kind of smoother oval. And what you're seeing there is likewise the transient period and the steady state period. So that transient period is this wandering around here. And then finally this smooth oval or ellipse is when we get on the, um, the in the steady state regime. So that's what we're seeing in that situation. I can, um, show you that a little more carefully. If I slice the data of theta versus omega that I'm, I'm plotting. So I'm just gonna plot from 1000 uh, to the end of the time bin. So I've got 2000 time intervals. I'm just gonna plot the last thousand of them. So the, the last 25 seconds. And so if I do that, we just see that simple um, ellipse as if we're just seeing some simple periodic motion that's driven by the, the driving force. Okay. <clears throat> so let's start moving away from equilibrium. So supposing we make this point, the only number I'm changing is the angular frequency of the driving force. And now it's 10% away from equilibrium. So we'll just run this case. I think I can do this one pretty quickly. And um, I think I can remove the slice in here. So this is, the situation for the uh, driving frequency that's not 99%, but 90% of the uh, natural frequency. There's a longer tran transient period. It takes longer to, for, to get to this steady state where the fact that there was no, originally no driving force has kind of, we've kind of lost that memory of that. So it's not to maybe 15 or 20 seconds now that we see simple periodic behavior in the displacement, simple periodic behavior in the, in the angular velocity. The, um, the phase space trajectory here to steady state takes several laps on this diagram, on the phase space diagram. If I was to look at the last 25 seconds on the phase space diagram by slicing the arrays that have theta and omega in them. We see that eventually though, we do reach this sort of sim more simple periodic behavior um, for this driving force that is now um, just 90% of the um, natural frequency. Okay, so I'm going to go to another case. We're going to do a bunch of cases here and just see what happens. So 7.24. Uh, so there's going to be some numbers here. You, that see, well, why on earth would he have picked those? Um, I was kind of randomly picking them to try and pick out different features. Uh, that, that's the reason for this. So now we're at 72% or so of the um, natural frequency. So we're getting a significant distance in a driving frequency from the natural frequency. And I think really I wanna look at this guy. So now this is starting to get you know, more interesting perhaps. One thing 
that you can see in the uh, top two diagrams, which show the angular displacement versus time and the angular velocity versus time, is actually that this pendulum, pendulum is now looping the loop due to the driving force. Because of the phase, the difference in frequencies of the driving force and the natural frequency, this pendulum is swinging over the top multiple times. So if you look at the scale here, so this is radians, right? And there's two pi radians in one complete circle. So every time we jump down um, two pi on this plot, so from zero to six point something, we've, the pendulum's loop the loop. And so this pendulum is looping the loop multiple times. There's a swinging round and round and round. In the angular velocity, right, it, it has a, this sort of interesting pattern, um, which <coughs> sort of has a transient period to it, and then a, um, a more periodic period, but certainly a much more complicated motion now for the, um, for the pendulum. And it looks uh, especially complicated probably in this, in this phase space diagram. If I was to look at the last 25 seconds in the phase space diagram, again, with the idea, I'm going to remove some of the transient period, right? It's the transient period in here, but after 20 or 25 seconds, it looks like whatever periodic motion there is, it's periodic. It's not sinusoidal, but it is periodic. Um, it seems to reach that periodic motion. Uh, let's, let's see what the phase space plot looks like then. You see this. So it also has converged to a kind of si a simple repeating or periodic motion. It's not sinusoidal motion. It's not like this oval that we saw in the last case. Um, it is this more complicated path in phase space, but it keeps walking around this complicated path in, in phase space. So it'll walk in from the right, right hand side over here, loop around here, walk out the left hand side over here, and then repeat, and then repeat again. And so it, it's still evolved to some sort of periodic motion it's just a more complicated periodic motion than um, just a sinusoidal motion. Uh, we saw very close to resonance. I made a little animation of this, I think. Oh, I think I already set it up here. Is this the right one? No, this is not the right one. So this shows the motion of the pendulum, physical pendulum on the left, left hand side. Let's go back, gosh, it's got out of control. How do I escape? I think I want to play this more slower. Okay, so on the, on the left-hand side, you, you're seeing this motion of the dri driven pendulum. And you see it's not simple sinusoidal, but it is, if you follow it, it is a periodic pattern. <coughs> it swings to the midpoint over here and then does a loop over the top and then goes back to that kind of midpoint on the right and then swings, loops over the top. And then again, swings back to that kind of midpoint there and then goes over the top. 
So it's a periodic motion, but not a, a sinusoidal motion. I should say one thing about the phase space plot that I made here. Um, this is the plane. Oh, it's, it's me talking at a very slow pace because. <laughs> um, we, don't, we don't want to hear that, that's for sure. Um, so on the phase space plot, Don't want to see me either. On this phase space plot, um, theta, remember, we kept going looping over the top. And every time we looped over the top, we advanced two pi radians. And so every time we loop over the top, right, the angle is uh, advancing two pi radians, or uh, actually is going in the negative direction. So it's advancing in the negative direction, two pi radians. In my phase space plot, I'm just plotting the angle on the range from minus pi to pi. So I'm basically dividing by two pi and taking the remainder so that I keep it on the, um, uh, so that I discount the loop the loops. That way we could see that it was um, actually going through the same periodic behavior once it got past the transitory <coughs> period. Uh, it just wasn't a uh, sinusoidal behavior. Is that part of the trajectory and uh, trajectory itself? Yeah, so uh, the trajectory is at, at this point, right? Uh, it has the, exactly the same angle. That's a, that's a really good question. So it has the same angular displacement and it has the same angular velocity. Now the change is different. So it's going a different route through that point. But um, that's a big difference between, um, uh, I, I don't think I want to, you know, you, if you have just a simple pendulum, right, you keep going through the same point on, on the phase space diagram. Mm -hmm. um, but that's basically when you're working your way around an oval. Well, here we're also going through the same point on the phase space diagram, but it's just, you know, the, the point after that is different on the trajectories. Okay, so now, um, so the, the reason I wanted to show with that one was we've evolved from a kind of sinusoidal steady state behavior to more complicated periodic steady state behavior. So there has been some evolution, uh, and that's a feature of this nonlinear differential equation. So the, we would never have seen that in a, a, a linear differential equation. So now I'm gonna move a little bit further away from resonance. I'm changing it to 0.7 rather than 0.72. Just take a look at this case. <coughs> So at first sight, this is going to look very similar. Angular displacement upstairs, angular velocity in the center, phase space at the bottom. We've got the same looping the loop that advances our angle by two, two pi every time we loop the loop. We got the same sort of periodic, uh, but not sinusoidal structure in the velocity. And again, if we were to wait 20 or 25 seconds, we could get out of this transitory region here into this, um, this periodic region here. And um, I think what I wanna do is just show you on, on the phase space, I'm just, actually, first let me show you on the phase space, the whole phase space plot. I'd already chopped off the um, first 25 nanoseconds, first 25 seconds there. So it's, it's much more complicated 
um, during the transitory, uh, transient period. So here's where we start. We walk our way around here, and then we start building this, this pattern up here. Uh, but if I go back to just looking at the last 25 seconds, You see an interesting feature. And this feature is the bifurcation on the face face diagram. So it now is not just a single periodic repetition uh, on the face face diagram, or if you were to look at theta versus time or omega versus time, there's a period, what we call a period doubling. So there's a bifurcation here. And so you see a pattern of two distinct sort of paths of kind of looping the loop and getting back to where you started. And you can see it, I hope you can see it, there's, there's two, part, two distinct paths around this loop. And so this is where bifurcation has happened. And this, when we looked at the logistics map, there was the sort of first signs of, um, one of the first signs of chaos was at the beginnings of bifurcation. And if we were to <clears throat> carry on decreasing the, um, the uh, driving frequency, you would see more and more doubling. So you go from um, uh, period two to period four to period eight, you see a, a whole sequence of doublings until you produce chaotic behavior. So the last one I wanted to show you was I'm going to change this to um, 0.667. So not really very far away, just a couple of percent away. But within that little space, a little change of the um, driving frequency. We, we've basically transitioned into chaotic behavior. So between the 0 0.70 and the 0 0.67, um, we went through the period doubling, period, four periods, eight periods, and now we're just in chaotic behavior. Uh, you can see the chaotic behavior in the um, uh, angle versus time. You know, it's not really a, a clear pattern here, even at 50. 50 seconds, you can see it in angular velocity versus time. You can see it particularly clearly in the in the face face plot versus time. If I was to look at the face face plot and just plot the last 25 seconds, which in the previous examples allowed us to see the simple sort of steady state periodic behavior. Uh, now now we, we're no longer seeing that. It's much more complicated. And so this is the kind of the onset of chaos. Um, this is the regime where if I, for example, change the parameters by tiny amounts, so I'm not going to go through it anymore because it's getting, beginning to get, even for me, tedious. Um, it, if I was to change this from 0.667 to 0.668, we'll see a different pattern. If I was to change it from 0.667 to 0.666, we'd see a different pattern again. So we're in this regime where we're very sensitive to the, the parameters of the, of the pendulum. Any questions on all that? Okay, so here's, here's the assignment related to this class, which is really just for you to <coughs> explore this um, sort of world of the pendulum and the onset of chaos and the making of a 
phase space plot where you see the phase space trajectories <coughs> in the assignment. So um, you'll, you'll take your version of your um, uh, pendulum, damp driven pendulum code and the numerical solution of the damp driven pendulum. And I'm basically asking you to um, calculate the solutions to starting with a simple case of a, uh, I think an undamped pendulum, uh, add in damping, then add in the driving force and explore when this simple periodicity turns into um, period doubling and then finally turns into to chaotic behavior. So in, in this assignment, I think I've suggested a, a bunch of values to try. <coughs> They're not the values I use to, uh, to pick out these features. Um, so you, you'll be trying these values. You'll be adding this phase space diagram. Any questions on, on all that? Okay. Then uh, I'll leave you in peace, I guess. Thank <laughs> you. 